everyone, it's Lindsay. I'm super excited to be back on the Imagine channel and I'm going to share with you these three cards today all with ombre ink blending on them. Ombre ink blending or just ink blending in general is something I use on a lot, a lot, a lot of my cards and it can be a little tricky when you first are starting stamping to get it just right. Something I suggest doing whenever you are just getting new to stamping and really just getting started with ink blending is swatch out your ink pads. I do it very simply with two by two pieces of cardstock, a stamp, my ink pads, and then I punch a hole in the top. I used handwriting to write on my ink names and things. That helps me pick out my colors. It's especially important whenever you're doing ombre ink blending. You need that gradual buildup of color. So you need those different layers of colors that are close and similar in tone. So those swatches can really help you. Now, whenever you're ink blending, there are lots and lots of different tools that you can use to go about ink blending. I would suggest starting with dye ink pads. I think those are the easiest. They also settle down into the paper a lot better than your pigment each, which sit on top of the paper. And they all kind of blend together naturally just by the nature of the dye inks. So you don't have to do a lot of work. I'm also using a brush. However, something else I will share in this video are ink daubers that work really well. I especially love the jumbo ink daubers. Those work immensely well for ink blending. You also need to worry about the cardstock. Make sure you are working on a smooth cardstock. I'm working on a heavy weight cardstock as well. This is again going to absorb that ink and let it soak into the paper and blend together. So whenever I am ink blending, I like to start with my lightest color. In this case, I started with dandelion, went to cantaloupe, then tangelo, and then I went to Morocco. These are all memento colors, and these are in the dewdrop forms. These are mini ink pads, so they're great to get a lot of for a very cheap price when you're first starting out. I'm also working on the Imagine Craft Mat, which helps a lot moving that color around, and I don't waste a lot of ink. Now, as I'm blending, I work between two colors at a time. You can see that throughout my blending technique. I work through two colors. I go from lightest to darkest, and then I go back up into the lightest again just to give everything a good blend. I also finish with a nice shade of the light color all over the entire background just to kind of tone everything together. Now, this particular ombre I used for a sunset background. That's something I use a lot of my ombre backgrounds for is for sky backgrounds. I added a little scene with a window pane die. Very, very simple and easy to do. So let's move on to my next background. This one I'm actually going to be working through a stencil, which if you are new to ink blending and you want that really nice smooth blended look, but you can't get it just by going straight onto cardstock, go through a stencil. Breaking up the pattern really helps with the look of everything. Now for this particular card, I'm going in with greens. So I'm starting off with pistachio or with new sprout, going to pista pistachio, olive grove, and then northern pine. I'm also using this jumbo ink dauber like I mentioned before. This is fantastic. Now, if you look at my colors of ink, you will notice that the tones of these inks are kind of all over the place. In order to get them all the same tone, what I did was I actually grabbed one of my used sponge daubers. This one had brown ink on it. It's going to mix as I go in with all of my different colors of green. It's going to mix with those green colors and it's going to tone them with that brown ink. So everything is going to blend very nicely and it's going to all look seamless and like the same tone of ink once it's all said and done. So that new sprout was a little bright that brown in the sponge dauber toned it down and also this uh, northern pine is a little dark so that brown is just going to mix with that kind of give it a different tone to the ink look now you can see I didn't spend a whole lot of time here blending this it took maybe three or four minutes but once I peel this stencil off I've got this beautifully blended background and it took little to no effort to get it that way just by breaking up that pattern a little bit 
Now for this background, I actually die cut it down with the cat scrappiness die, and I added a little sentiment off to the right hand side. These feathers and this die set are from Concord and Ninth. It's called Feathered, very fitting. I did three of those little feathers, made a little bunch of them, added a bow and some sequins. Now finally, I'm gonna go over some ink blending with pigment inks. I'll be using using the VersaFine Claire inks. Again, I swatch these out just the same as I do my dye inks so I can go in and match colors. The only thing I do differently on some of these inks, if they go over black cardstock, I do put a little strip of black on the back. Now, here's where it gets a little interesting and that Imagine Craft mat really comes in helpful with these. So my brown inks, again, the tones are a little bit all over the place. The good thing about pigment inks is you can mix them on your craft mat. So I'm going in with my brush, dipping into the ink pads, and you can see I'm putting some off to the side over there. That's where I'm picking up from. This is also going to soften everything. So you're Whenever you pick up pigment inks, especially these, they're very juicy, you get a lot. So I like to go off, dab over on the craft mat, and then use that as my working palette. I can mix the colors from there, mix them together between the two, really get some nice gradients. This is also gonna help you if you don't have a lot of ink pads. So you can mix some colors together, get some new blends in there, make some new colors, and really go in and get that nice ombre look. You can see I needed a little bit of a darker color on top. My lightest color was just a little bit too light, so I mixed it a little bit with my darker color, and I had a whole new color of ink that I could ink blend with. And there I've got that beautiful background that is toned, it's ready to go. So there's just a few tips on using this Imagine Craft Mat with your pigment inks. But cleaning these up is a little different. Your dye inks, you can you can just use a baby wipe. You can use some water and a cloth. With the pigment inks, it's just gonna seize up with water. So what I like to use is a little bit of alcohol. You can also use the stays on cleaner, um, but alcohol is something you can get a hold of relatively easy at your local store. So I just put it in a little spray bottle, use a baby wipe and clean it all at my craft mat, my stencil that way. Now this card, I turned the background into a little bit of a shaker. I stamped happy birthday um, on the actual film itself with Versamark ink and used the new emboss embossing powders in the champagne color to not only do the sentiment, but I also added it onto my die cut to match everything. I absolutely love the way this card turned out. It was a fun one. That does it for me today. I want to thank you guys for watching and happy crafting everyone.